I take two. Okay. How does one encapsulate Mick Hawkinson in a short video? For all his stories, adventures, and cynicism, I think the best way is to let his loved ones sum it up. Now, don't take this personally. And this is just my two penneth. What you've got to understand is that we'd just like to wish, wish you, you a happy, happy birthday. birthday. Hi, Mick. Good evening, Mick Hopkinson. Hello, Mick. John Goldman here. Hey, up, blood. Happy birthday, Mick. Happy, happy birthday, Hoppy! 33 years of uh, knowing and playing and working with and hanging out and drinking beer with Mick Hopkinson. So I, I met Mick in 1984. I was uh, 18 years old at the time. Nostalgia kicks in when you get into our age and you're older than me so you've had more years of it. You're the best father I could have ever asked for but that's no surprise. You've spent your whole life mentoring and guiding people to accomplish their goals. There are hundreds of people around the world. They've got your words of wisdom still rattling around their brain, telling them to push themselves that extra step and accomplish their dreams. When I think of Mick, I think of three things that he's taught me in my life. The first of them is the concept of experiential learning. Um, and that you learn a lot from the mistakes that you make in life and that you shouldn't shy away from making mistakes. Autumn here. That's a season you haven't seen for a long time, I imagine. Anyway, autumn was the time of year that you first started uh, getting me kayaking on the River Air initially. Um, the danger there wasn't any of the rapids, it was more the uh, uh, rat urine that was sort of floating around in uh, that industrial uh, sort of river running through a few, few towns. Uh, and then when it, when, uh, it rained, we'd go up to um, Apple Tree Rick up into the Dales, get a few decent rapids up there. And then when it got really cold, you'd take it up to Teesdale or over to uh, North Wales. And uh, I can remember the first time I ever did uh, the uh, Serpent's Tail and uh, Flangothlin Town Rapid. I had ice all the way down my um, life jacket and along my uh, shaft. So it's bloody cold in those days. Wednesday afternoon, I think it was, from St. Bede's. And I think you were at a loose end, and uh, we'd only just started paddling. And we went up uh, to Apple Tree Wick, and I should have known something was afoot because all the roads were flooded, and uh, we weren't very good. Anyway, uh, we got on the water. I vividly remember your words. You said, go where I go and do what I do. Follow me. And then you disappeared over the first wave, and I never saw you again because uh, I got completely spannered. Um, and I, that, that, that's okay because I spent the next 50 years getting spannered and I'm still doing it. But I realised there's a really valuable coaching technique there. It's um, uh, take people who were completely unprepared and throw them in at the deep end. And if they survive that, they're likely to continue. I'd been paddling that day and asked you what you're going to do the next day. You told me you're going to do Sargood's Weir, provided it had dropped a little bit. I was very sheepish because I'd been running it earlier that day on my own, scared myself shitless. It was after that that you gave me the name Rutter the Nutter. I was on an out, the first outdoor educators course at, at uh, the Outdoor Pursuit Centre and one of the reasons, well besides desperately wanting to be an outdoor instructor, um, uh, but being keen on kayaking was that I'd heard that this guy Mick Hopkinson, who was a famous a uh, slalom racer and British expedition kayaker uh, was going to be working on the program. The Five Pint Story. Fudge dress party, you a wetsuit, then having to get the bus home across Bradford at 5.30 in the morning still in the wetsuit to get home, to get changed, to go to teach. Tonight I think it would be a good night to tell the Ten Pint Story. The first life lesson, kayak construction lesson I learned from Mick uh, back when I was a boat slave was uh, to be a decent uh, kayak instructor you need to know how to build a firewood shed. Um, so I built a firewood shed out of recycled bits and pieces, I'm not quite sure how they relate. Uh, second one is if you want to be a successful kayak instructor you need to also um, 
uh, empty a freezer full of meat that had been defrosted for a couple of weeks and started to decompose. Thanks Graham and Charles for that. Um, third piece of uh, wisdom or um, life lesson from Mick is um, if you're suffering a broken heart, you need to fly up a West Coast River, even though you're rusty. Thanks for the Arahura trip. You know, Mick looked after me. Anything simply from fuel money uh, to introducing me to Marty Sinclair and going, you want to climb, I know you want to climb. This is, you need to go and climb Mount Cook with Marty Sinclair, even though he just was three weeks out of open heart surgery, <laughs> which I didn't know until the summit rocks of Mount Cook when Marty took his shirt off and I was like, what the fuck? And he's this horrible welt where they had opened his chest up. I always enjoyed your precise use of the English language. I remember the first time we met, we were on the Cuckoo River Bridge, and you said, that, and what do you do? And I said, I'm a small pig farmer. Would that be a small farm or small pigs? You raised me to appreciate life for its venture to work hard towards achieving my goals and enjoy the character building along the way. Thank you for being a fantastic mentor to me all these years and taking me on as one of your oldest boat slaves back in the day. Uh, meeting Mick completely changed my life and I wouldn't have it any other way up to this point. And uh, I'm just hoping that one day I can have enough stories and my life be as fulfilled as Mick's has been. The second concept he's taught me and that one comes in the form of a quote. Good judgment is based on experience, and experience is based on bad judgment. I think probably everyone's heard that quote from Mick. Uh, but I think, I think he often gave that in terms of, in relation to kayaking, but I think it transcends into most aspects of your life. Um, it's been fantastic uh, getting to know you for the last 10 years, adventuring together, working with you and seeing you around the world. It's been an absolute privilege um, getting to spend that time with you. I uh, consider you a really strong role model and have had an absolute uh, blast for those 10 years. Uh, looking forward to many, many more years ahead. My uh, abiding memory of you is that uh, Along with um, Crawler and Gagan, you were always Colgan's blue eyes and favourites. Good at all things scouting, camping, canoeing, hiking, table tennis. Uh, and, uh, although I did, I think I did once beat you at that game. Uh, you were adventurous and uh, fearless, and to uh, to us uh, a hero to uh, to we young scouts at the time. As you know Mick, uh, all heroes fall from grace from time to time and I seem to remember one summer all wit camp when uh, a salad was being served at tea time and uh, as you were approaching the serving table you were heard to say something akin to tomatoes are shit and I don't want any. This guy was uh, a mentor and he still is when I talk about Mick Hopkinson even now I'm 52 years old Mick's about to be 70 that Mick is still a mentor it doesn't matter how much older I get he just keeps uh, getting older as well and we move through that relationship and so um, you know it was it was fantastic to to fast forward a number of years down the road to you know Mick's time as director at OPC and uh, you know, through the, the grieving processes, through some of those hard times when Marty Sinclair was killed and, and to be there. And despite our age difference, uh, the fact that we, I would consider us uh, best of mates and, and that we looked after each other and I could help Mick through those times and then he helped me through a lot of uh, those sort of hard times when people uh, got killed, you know, in doing the things that we love. Dad, you aren't just part of the community. You're someone who sculpted it and built it up around you. You've been a part of the search and rescue, the ambulance, and you've changed the community in Murchison. And I'm sure hundreds of communities will follow your travels. And thanks for being a kayaking encyclopedia and choosing to share that knowledge with both of us and helping us to learn and grow as kayakers and, and welcoming us into your kayaking tribe and looking forward to many more adventures to come. So. Mick, uh, Jerry, I'm in Kathmandu and it's all your fault. 
1976, Dude Cozy shaped a lot of our lives. Anyway, we're uh, wishing you a very happy birthday from the Himalayas and uh, thanks for the inspiration, buddy. Amazing, and if there's one thing I could say to you that uh, I totally appreciate from you is uh, if ever in those 33 years, for whatever reason, I needed a friend, I just needed an ear, someone to come and talk things out with and stuff, you have always been there for me. But the story that's unique to me is when I was at a low ebb, a kayaker unable to kayak due to injury. But Mick kept me involved. Later, Mick and Pam offered me a job in kayaking when no one else thought they could employ me. A chance they took, for which I'll always be grateful. So it came as quite a surprise when suddenly out of the blue, because we'd never met this woman Pam, um, you know, Mick's been off doing his sort of rock star uh, TV support rigging kind of thing, and, uh, and then all of the next thing we know it's like, oh, we're getting married. It's like, holy crap, you're kidding me. What sort of woman manages to tame this guy and, and wants to sign up for this whole thing? You know, this is Mick Hopkinson, for God's sake. Hi, Mick. To my wonderful and loving husband, happy 70th birthday. Love your wife. Holy crap, this is a moment in time. Mick Hopkinson and Pam are getting married. And, but, and then, of course, you know, things settle in. It's like, wow, Mick got married. That kind of diffuses and dies off. And, you know, a few people might have thrown in there. It's like, huh, what happens if they had a kid? Wouldn't that be pretty funny, you know? Hey, Dad. Starting with meeting you and Pam at midnight in the dark at City of Rocks in the parking lot, that got us off to a good start. Then all of our adventures with Liam and Sydney, summer adventures, including lots of card games where you didn't know how I beat you at Shoot the Moon. Favorite part, just the community and the can you remember when these ruled the world? You must be able to do because you're a bit of a dinosaur. <laughs> anyway, you take me lots of places, and then obviously, we went on to the Dud Cozy and uh, Braldu, and, uh, and we've been paddling all over the place, Mick, and it's all down to you, really, Mick. Thanks. The third concept that he taught me that I really value is the concept of fishes and loaves. Inviting multiple people around for dinner with uh, not really any concept of how many people you're going to have and that it will just work because it always does. It always works out. Anyway, it's uh, I'm really stoked that you're turning 70, Mick. Not everyone makes it that far, so congratulations. Anyhow, Mick, here's just a couple of those things that have happen, happened throughout our years together. Uh, I wish you a great night with family and friends. Have a dance for me. Uh, don't, let, don't let wheels spill any red wine on the carpet. And um, I'll see you uh, hopefully in years to come. Happy birthday, dog. Here we are, El Capitan. Happy birthday, Mick. Have a good one. Cheers and uh, happy birthday. Uh, wishing you a happy and most excellent birthday uh, from here in downtown Copenhagen. I uh, wish we could be there. I want to wish you a very happy 70th birthday. And Hope you're having a great one getting out the whiskey, <laughs> drinking the beers. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Coming to you on day three on the YO expedition, thinking about the one and only Mick Hopkinson. You ready? <laughs> Go! Happy birthday, Dad! Happy birthday, Dad!